The forward Euler algorithm is an algorithm to estimate the solution to differential equations. Let's illustrate how to use it to solve the pure time differential equation x prime of t equals t cubed minus 5t minus 2 with the initial condition that x of t is 10 at time t equals 0. Our goal is to estimate the solution x of t. We know we must start at x of 0 equals 10. And the next question is to determine how fast x of t is changing at t equals 0. This rate of change is simply the slope or derivative of the function x of t at the initial time t equals 0. We can calculate this derivative directly from the differential equation by plugging in t equals 0. We calculate that x prime of 0 is 0 cubed minus 5 times 0 minus 2, or negative 2. The slope of the graph of x of t is negative 2 only at t equals 0. For larger values of t, it will change according to the equation x prime of t equals t cubed minus 5t minus 2. But let's pretend that we don't realize that fact. Let's pretend that the slope x prime of t stays fixed at the value negative 2. A function with constant slope is a line, so let's use the linear approximation to x of t evaluated at t equals 0. We denote this linear approximation as L naught of t, where the 0 indicates we are matching the function and its derivative at t equals 0. We obtain the equation for a line with a slope of negative 2 and y-intercept of 10. The graph of the linear approximation looks like this. The slope looks shallower than negative 2 because the vertical scale is much larger than the horizontal scale. But indeed, it drops by 8 units by the time we get to t equals 4. We could claim that L naught of t is a good approximation to the solution if the derivative, x prime of t, stayed constant at negative 2 for all time, or at least didn't change much. However, if we look at the formula for x prime of t, it's pretty clear that x prime of t is not constantly negative 2, but instead changes to much different values. Since x of t is continuous, though, we can expect it to stay relatively close to negative 2 for a short amount of time. We can expect the linear approximation L naught of t to be an OK approximation to the real solution x of t for small values of t. If we are OK with approximating x of t by the linear function 10 minus 2t for a small amount of time, how can we estimate values of the solution for longer times? One option is the forward Euler algorithm in which we pick some small length of time delta t and use L naught of t for that small interval of time. Then we'll calculate a new linear approximation and continue the process. Let's illustrate the forward Euler algorithm by choosing an interval length delta t of 1. We use our linear approximation that we calculated from t equals 0, i.e. our L naught of t, to estimate the value of the solution at t equals 1. This approximation for x of 1 is 10 minus 2 times 1, or 8. I've highlighted this result in red on the graph. Now that we've estimated x of 1 to be 8, we can repeat the process by calculating a new linear approximation at t equals 1. We call this linear approximation L1 of t to emphasize it is calculated at t equals 1. The value of x and its derivative are calculated at t equals 1, and we subtract 1 from t, as highlighted in red. This linear approximation is the equation for the line that is equal to x of 1 when t equals 1 and has a slope equal to x prime of 1. We have an estimate of x of 1. The only new piece of information we need is x prime of 1. We calculate this derivative directly from the differential equation. Plugging in t equals 1 into the differential equation, we find that x prime of 1 is equal to negative 6. The derivative decreases from negative 2 at t equals 0 to negative 6 at t equals 1. The function x of t is beginning to decrease more steeply. Plugging in x of 1 equals 8 and x prime of 1 equals negative 6 into the linear approximation formula, we obtain a new approximation for x of t for t greater than 1. When we graph this second linear approximation, we see how the estimate of x of t decreases more steeply. Since we are using time intervals of length delta t equals 1, we'll use this linear approximation for a step of that length and estimate the value of x of t at t equals 0. The linear approximation yields x of 2 equals 2, which we plot on the graph with another red point. To summarize our results so far with delta t equals 1, we use the linear approximation at t equals 0 to estimate that x of 1 is 8, then use the linear approximation at t equals 1 to estimate that x of 2 is 2. 
Let's continue this process for two more time steps to estimate x of t at t equals 3 and t equals 4. For these steps, I won't describe all the calculations. You can pause the video if you'd like to follow all the details. We write down a linear approximation for x of t at t equals 2. The important fact to note in this calculation is that x prime of 2 is negative 4. The derivative has increased a little bit. We draw a line sloping downward with slope negative 4. From this line, we estimate that x of 3 is about negative 2. For the fourth and final step using delta t equals 1, we write down a linear approximation for x of t at t equals 3. Note that the estimate for x prime of 3 is 10. The slope has become large and positive, and this last linear approximation increases rapidly. The forward Euler estimate of x of 4 is 8. When delta t equals 1, the forward Euler algorithm took four steps to get to t equals 4. I've gathered formulas for all four steps together. Let's massage them to make them prettier and easier to remember. First, let's get rid of some extra information and just keep the final formulas. Next, notice that in this step we are multiplying the derivative by the same number. 1 minus 0, 2 minus 1, 3 minus 2, etc. are all the length of the time interval delta t, which in this case is 1. Let's rewrite the formulas to show this dependence on delta t. We evaluate the functions and the derivatives at the points 0, 1, 2, etc which are all multiples of the time interval delta t. Let's define the time points t0, t1, t2, etc. as these multiples of delta t and replace the numbers with these time points. In this way, our formulas are no longer specific to delta t equals 1. In fact, let's remove any reference to the value 1 and just keep the definitions in terms of delta t. Now our formulas for forward Euler will work for any value of the time interval delta t. Of course, we can continue this process beyond the fourth time point. If we like, we can write the forward Euler formula for an arbitrary time point ti. The value x of ti plus 1 at the next time point is approximated as the value x of ti of the previous time point plus the value of the derivative times delta t. More important than memorizing this formula is understanding the idea behind the forward Euler algorithm. In each step, we simply calculate the slope of the function as the derivative given by the differential equation. Then we take a step of size delta t with that slope. We can continue this process for as long as we want, though if we are calculating the forward Euler algorithm by hand, there is always the danger we might fall asleep in the middle of repeating these tedious steps. The forward Euler algorithm is nice in that it gives us an answer. You might have some lingering doubts about the accuracy of the crude approximation of assuming the slope does not change in the middle of these intervals of length delta t. Rather than directly trying to estimate its accuracy here, though, let's think about how we could improve the accuracy of the forward Euler algorithm. We could increase the accuracy by taking smaller time steps delta t so that we recalculate the slope of the function more frequently. For example, we could cut the time interval in half to delta t equals 1 half. This sounds like a good idea, but the cost is that we have to take twice as many steps to get to t equals 4, we have to take 8 steps of the algorithm. Ready to crunch some numbers? There, those calculations weren't so bad. OK, I don't feel like reading those numbers either. Let's just summarize the results of this graphically. We start off with the same slope of negative 2, but this time only use the slope until t equals 1 half. Then we recalculate the slope at t equals 1 half and find that the function already should be decreasing more rapidly. This change in slope was undetected by the first calculation with delta t equals 1. For the next three time steps, the slopes don't change much, and the new calculation with delta t equals 1 half isn't too different from the first calculation with delta t equals 1. We see that the slope already becomes positive at t equals 2 and a half. When we get to t equals 3 and a half, we see that the slope has increased dramatically, and that we significantly underestimated the value of x of 4 in the first calculation with delta t equals 1. In fact, we exceeded the scale of the graph, so let's increase the vertical scale so that everything fits. The second calculation, with delta t equals 1 half, the green curve, is more accurate than the first calculation with delta t equals 1, the blue curve. Because we took a smaller time step, we could adjust the direction more frequently. However, the improved accuracy came at a cost, as we had to do twice as much work. We should really estimate the solution with even smaller delta t, but that would be a big pain to do by hand. Instead, we wrote a computer program to do the calculation for us. 
The solution with delta t equals 1 quarter, 16 steps total, is shown by the cyan curve. We could even try delta t equals 1 eighth, 32 steps total, as shown by the thin magenta curve. Again, we see that we've been underestimating the value of x of 4, as the last curve exceeded our scale again. The calculations with larger time steps, delta t, have been significantly underestimating this value, and we must increase the vertical scale of the graph even further. In summary, the forward Euler algorithm is a fairly simple algorithm to estimate the solution of a differential equation. However, for accuracy, one needs to take many small time steps, which is best done with a computer program.